Hey everyone, hope you guys are doing good. So last question, guys, on chapter two, chapter eight, this is a past midterm question, everyone, and this is very tricky. So let's get into it. So everyone, up to this point here, we've separated product and period costs. We've built statements. We used, we've used algebra and statements. We've done the difference between variable and fixed costs, right? We've determined mixed costs, what to do with it, right? Then we figured out how to calculate the total cost per unit, different levels of output. And now, everyone, we're taking everything and we're putting it all together. So we have to build our statements. We have to separate between variable costs and fixed costs. We have to calculate the cost when output changes and taking everything into account. OK, so this is a very tricky problem. So let's get into it. And this just pulls together everything that we've done up in this chapter. So let's get it. So. Bob Manufacturing Inc. has the following accounting records for the year 2024. Sales, selling expenses. Now, there's a little star next to selling expenses because it tells us there's a variable portion and a fixed portion. Okay. Now, same thing for overhead. There's a variable portion and a fixed portion. They give us COG M. They give us DL, DM purchased. And then they give us our beginning and our ending balances, 1st of June, 31st of June. And they tell us for this information above, it's based on producing and selling 30,000 units. Okay. So, everyone... Required A, what's the variable product cost? Required B, what's the prime cost? Required C, what's the total product cost? And everyone, when we're going to calculate the total product cost per unit if we produce and sell 18,000 units. And then we have the total cost per unit if we produce and sell 25,000 units. Okay, so what we're going to do, guys, here, we first have to differentiate our product and our period costs. Okay, so in other words, guys, we got to build our COG M schedule, our COG schedule, and our income statement. Okay, so COG M schedule. Let's start by writing this all out. Okay, so our COG M here. Let's go put an underline. Our DM, our sorry, our beginning DM, purchase of DM, ending DM, and that gives us our DM used. Then we have our DL, MOH, TMC, BWIP, EWIP, COG M. Okay, guys, and that's how fast I want you to do it on your exam. Okay, I don't want you to waste time here. Plus this, minus that. Well, just quick and dirty, get it done. Okay, get it done so you can pass and then never have to hear these recordings again. BFG, COG M, EFG, COG S. There we go. Then last but not least, income statement. Sales. Hogs, gross profit, P-E-O-I. There we go. Okay, now, last but not least, let's fill in everything we know. And then let's start answering afterwards. So our beginning DM, 90,000. Okay, 90,000 here. Whoops, 2024. There we go. 90,000. Okay, then minus 105 here. Let's start. Let's put all our. I'm gonna start off, guys. We're just putting in our beginning and ending balances. So let's just start with that. Our BWIP 177. Our EWIP minus 169 500. Our beginning finished goods 153000. 0, 0, 0. And our ending finished goods is the exact same number. Okay, full 153000. 0, 0, 0. Okay, awesome. I'm surprised it's the same number, but oh, I would like to have changed that. But we're already recording. Because basically, guys, if beginning finished goods is the same number, sorry, beginning and ending finished goods is the same number, our COG M is, and cost of goods sold is just going to be the same number too, mathematically, which I don't like. But it's okay, whatever. This is a past exam, right? So nothing we could do. If these are the numbers are, that's how they are. So COG M and cost of goods sold is just going to be the same mathematically. Okay, now, next thing. Let's get into it. So sales is $3 million, Okay, because now I'm done all my beginning and ending balances. I'm just going to fill in my points now from up here. Okay, so sales is $3 million, three. One, two, three, one, two, three for three million. Let me actually just put all these in dollar signs quickly. Okay, dollar sign. Dollar sign. Okay, perfect. All right, now sales is three million. Good. Selling expenses is 450,000. So our total period cost, guys, is 450,000. Okay. Now your DM purchased is 540,000. Okay, so guys, let's go calculate our DM used quickly. Oops. So equals sum at 25, and I'll put that in red. So solved it using algebra, DL 600. Okay, that's given. MOH, they give it to you is 810. 
So equals sum. Okay, there we go. Then equals sum. Okay, it's a habit. I just like doing all this, even though it's not needed. In this question, it's actually not needed. I'm pretty sure, but whatever. Why not? Equals sum. It's actually not needed at all. I don't know why I'm doing this because we could just kind of, well, actually, you know what? It's just good habit. It's getting into good habits. So let's just do this equals minus in front. Because you have to actually read the question, guys, especially on your exam. So it's not asking you to do these statements. So it's not required. But maybe you feel comfortable with just by doing everything, which is fine. Okay, there we go. Because it doesn't take long to do, if I'm being honest. Once you start practicing a bit, it's pretty quick. Okay, so anyways, we've just calculated the operating income. We're good to go. Okay, now, everyone, now that we've done the statements, we can basically go answer everything. So what are, what are calculate the total variable product cost. So everyone, what is our total variable product cost all right that's another word guys for total variable production cost okay so guys what costs are variable that are our product cost that's our dm used plus our dl plus our variable overhead because remember guys your overhead your moh it's mixed as a variable and fixed portion and here they tell you the voh portion is 405 so our dm used guys is 525 your DL is 600. Your VOH is 405 because they give it to you. And that gives you your VPC in total. So total VPC of sum 1,530. And that is your answer to A. And now just for fun, guys, what if they asked you the VPC per unit? What if they asked it just for fun? We divide by the number of units produced because it's a production cost. Okay. So you're going to do here. You're going to put, uh, what is it? 30,000 equals this divided by this. Whoops. This divided by press the up arrow. Wait, why is it not letting me click here? Wait, let me redo this. So equals this divided by this. There we go. 51. So that's your variable production cost period. So for each unit you produce and then sell, it'll cost you $51 just based on the production. Okay. Because why do you make, why do you produce you guys to sell it? Right. So when you sell it, the VPC per unit, the production portion is $51. All right. So now, everyone, now that we have this, okay, and this was just extra. I'm going to erase it now just, just for you guys to illustrate that. So our variable production cost is $1,530. Okay. There's A. Now, what are the prime costs? That's your DM used plus your DL. So I'm just going to write just press equals here, guys. Click on DM used, drag across. Then I'm going to drag down. DM used plus DL gives us prime cost. Sum this, 1,125,000. And this question, they didn't ask for conversion, but you want to do conversion just for fun? Because, guys, nothing is more fun than manage managerial accounting, obviously. So equals DL. Drag CC, your DL here is 600, MOH 810, Alt plus 1,410. Okay, so that's conversion cost if it was asked. Okay, now calculate the total product cost. Okay, guys, what's another word for total product cost? It's your total manufacturing fact during cost in other words your tmc okay actually i'll leave that there okay whatever anyways tmc you guys know what i mean i'm not gonna rewrite it is 1,935,000. so actually let's just put it in the answer box so your prime cost here is 1,125,000. your tmc is 1,935,000. Now, guys, what is the total product cost per unit? Bob Corp produces and sells 18,000 units. So a mistake they see students make here, guys, is they just take this and they divide this by 18,000. Now, why is that wrong, guys? Because the cost here, your TMC at this point, and for everything in the schedule, was based on producing and selling. This TMC was based on producing and selling 30,000 units. So what do you need to do, guys? You need to split the variable and the fixed portion, okay? So what is the total product cost per unit now? 
here's the thing, guys. They're not asking you total cost. They're asking you what's the total production cost only. So since it's the total product cost, we only put everyone our production costs, okay? That's the key note here that I need you guys to note down. Production costs only, okay? So let's get right into now if it's production cost only, okay? So for our total product cost, all right, now everyone, this is gonna be like the total cost equation that we've used before. So remember guys, our total cost equation is our VC per unit times the number of units, okay? And it could be units produced or sold based on if they want a total cost of units sold or total cost of units produced. Okay, and multiply by units produced or sold. So just right here, units plus total fixed cost, right? Now, everyone, they're being very specific here. What's the total product cost per unit? So we don't want to know, all right? We don't want to know like the combination of produced and sold. We want the product cost only. So what do we do here? Our total production cost, TPC, total production cost, okay, is your VC per unit times 18, well, like we'll have to figure this out. We'll have to figure out first, guys, the VC per unit. And then, guys, we'll have to figure out the TFC. Okay. Let me just hit my computer. It's 9 p.m. Just went on night mode. So let's go get rid of night mode here. Just give me a second. We're here. Night light. Let's get rid of that. There we go. I'm not sure if you guys see when my computer goes on night light. But yeah, maybe it's time to stop recording, but the show goes on. So we basically have to figure out these two components. And then afterwards, guys, once we solve for these two components, we can solve everything in the question. Okay. So first off, we have to find our total fixed production costs, right? So that we just have to add up. So remember, let's see, let's go look at what our total, okay, our total manufacturing cost is, okay? So in our TMC, because we're basically here taking the total, we have our total production cost, right? And that's broken into two components, our variable production cost plus our fixed production cost. Okay, now in our variable production cost, guys, our VPC. So all right here, total production cost is basically your variable production cost, which is everyone, your DM plus your, your DM used. That's right, like that, your DM used plus your DL plus your VOH. And then guys, plus your fixed production cost, which is guys, only your FOH. It's basically the last cost remaining because you guys know your production costs, your product costs, right? That's only DM used, DL and MOH, right? But now guys, your MOH, right? When you're separating costs between variable and fixed, MOH doesn't exist anymore, right? Remember guys, mixed costs, we have no place for it. So we actually guys have to separate it, VOH and FOH. This is how you're gonna be doing it all semester. So your production costs that you see in this course is always these four your DM used, your DL, and then guys, we don't combo MOH. We split it between variable and fixed, okay guys? So remember, mixed costs, fake news, okay? Split it between variable and fixed. So these are your product costs going forward for the rest of the semester, okay? So our TPC, our total production cost, is the variable portion, the DM, DL, and VOH, plus the fixed portion, the FOH, okay? So that's how you're doing it now, okay? So to keep moving forward here, all right, and let me just, uh, I'll just erase this now. Hope everyone's okay with that. Let's go add this all in. So first off, to find our variable production cost per unit. Okay, so total production cost here. Okay, let's go break this down. So our v variable production per unit, VPC per unit times number of units produced plus total production fixed cost. Okay, the P stands for production. So let's get into this now. So our total variable product cost, production cost, divided by, whoops, I just pressed there, divided by units produced equals VPC per unit. Okay, so our total variable production cost, guys, we figured out what that is, right? It was our DM used plus our DL plus our VOH, our variable red. So it's 1,530,000, okay? 1,530,000 is your variable production cost per unit, okay? So, I'm oh, sorry, your total variable production cost. Then guys, 
for these production costs, how many units were made for these for this cost? Like how many, like how did this cost get incurred in the first place? It's because we made 30,000 units. So if you want to find the cost per unit, you take the total and then you divide by the units produced, which gives you 51. So everyone, if your total is 1,530,000 and you produce 30,000, that means guys, your production cost for each unit that you produce and then sell afterwards, all right, it's $51 a unit. Because guys, why do you produce something? It's to sell it afterwards, okay? So your variable production cost per unit is 51, okay? Now, now that we have the variable portion of this, okay, we have to figure out what is the fixed portion, okay? Because now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just edit this equation, guys. Hope you're okay with that. Just wind back in the recording if you're wondering what I wrote. So 51, okay, the units produced, guys, is going to be 18,000 because that's what they're asking me for. What's the product cost per unit? So I have to first find the total production cost at 18,000 units. And then afterwards, I'll show you how to find the cost per unit. So to find the total production cost at 18,000 units, we take the variable co variable production cost per unit 51 times 18,000 units plus the fixed production cost. Now, guys, we know the variable production cost is the DM plus DL plus VOH, right? It's in red. And then the fixed production cost, guys, is just your fixed overhead. Okay, that's the only fixed production cost you have. It's your FOH only. So everyone, what is our FOH? What's our fixed overhead? Well, they give it to you here. It's 405,000. It's the same thing as the VOH. It's like split 50-50. And there we go, guys. We now have our production cost equation. So if they ask us the production cost of 18,000 units, it's very easy to do. Let's just build a little template here. VPC per unit, 51. Number of units produced. We'll wait for the end to fill that in. That gives us total VPC plus total fixed production cost. That gives me total production cost or TPC. I'll keep the abbreviations, okay? So let's put our lines here. So everyone, our total fixed production cost is 405. So guys, we want to find the total variable production cost, 51 units times 18,000 units. That gives you 51 times 18,000. That gives you 918 plus 405, you do equal sum. So that means guys, your total fixed production cost, if you made 18,000 units is 1,323,000. So now how do I find the total production cost per unit? Well, guys, if this was the total cost for making 18,000 units, then all we have to do to find the cost at this output is then divide by the number of units that got us there in the first place. So we do equals here, and then 18, drag across, we have the 18,000. Then we do this, divide by this. It gives you 73.5, and that is your total production cost per unit if you produced and sold 18,000, okay? That is how you do it, guys. You build your total production cost equation or your total cost equation. Here, guys, we have to build it with the production cost. But the key thing is here, guys, is you just need to find the variable fixed portion that goes in your variable cost side and then the fixed cost because these two numbers never change, right? So remember, guys, what I said in the theory video, total fixed cost doesn't change, okay? So remember, okay? So we have VC, guys, wait, VC, or I'll just write here, total VC, Okay, remember guys, this changes in total. This changes, whereas the VC per unit does not change. Okay, you guys remember that in the video? So the variable cost of changes in total, but on a per unit basis, it's fixed. So the variable cost per unit does not change. It's like, think of the example guys, remember with wage? Okay, whether you work one hour, two hours, 30 hours, you're still paid like $15 per hour. So that's the logic here guys. We basically wanna find the cost that, that does not change and our total cost equation. So same thing for total fixed cost, right? Total fixed cost in total does not change. And look at here, guys. Like I said, the variable cost per unit and the fix total fixed cost, we find these two because it does not change, right? That's why we find those two. Whereas the fixed cost per unit, it changes, right? So the example with rent, whether you have one pe one person, two person, 30 people in your apartment, where you live in a clown car, basically, right? The rent is still, for example, $1,000 a month, right? Because that's what you're paying the landlord. But on a per unit basis for you, 
right? That you, the one individual lives in like a clown car with 30 people, right? Your rent is going to be really low. It's going to be like a thousand divided by 30 because basically 30, what a life that would be $33 a month in rent. But anyways, that's besides the point. Well, living with 30, 30 people would also be a disaster. But that's besides the point. Anyways, your fixed cost changes per unit, guys, because in total, you're still paying the same amount to the landlord. But on a per unit basis, it's going to change because it's it's basically like you're getting more value out of it, right? It goes in like hand in hand with the concept of economies of scale, where the more you make, right? It's like the more value you're getting out of that $1,000. Because that $1,000 is not going to move, right? So you can make it cheaper per unit if you decide to make a lot more, okay? So you guys remember, fixed cost changes in total based on the amount you make, because it's like you're saying, you're taking that cost and you're spreading it between a greater number of units, right? So you have $1,000 in total. If you're only one person, it's like $1,000 a unit, right? But now if you're, let's say 10 people, you're taking the fixed cost and you're spreading it between more units. So you're getting more value out of it. So now it's $100 a unit, right? If you're like one person in an apartment, it's $1,000 a month per rent for you. But now guys, if you're 10 people, it's only $100 a month in rent. Okay, so the fixed cost guys, it changes in total based on the amount you make, okay? It's like saying you're spreading the cost between more units. So it's a little bit confusing relationship, but the important part here, guys, is that this is why we find these two equations, right? Because they don't change. So all we have to do is plug in the new units produced and we're in the money. We can do these questions, no problem. Okay, now, everyone, just to prove something else to you, let's copy in the schedule again and let's just put 30,000 here. Okay, look here at our total production cost at 1,935,000. Uh, proves we get right back to where we started. Everyone see this here? So all we have to do is plug in whatever units you want, and then you can get your answer. That's it. That's all. Okay. Now, next up here, what's the total cost per unit if Bob produces and sells 25,000 units? Okay. So that is a little bit different here, guys. It's a little bit different. Okay. So everyone, we basically need to see, okay, what is the total cost per unit or total cost of 25,000 units? And then afterwards, guys, all right, then afterwards, after we find the total cost per unit, or sorry, the total cost, then we just divide by the number of units. So it's kind of the same schedule here, guys, but we're going to make some adjustments. Okay, so it's the VC per unit because now we have to take into account variable and sell, variable production and selling costs. And then we have number of units produced and sold. It's the same amount. So we'll just leave produced here. That gives us total VC. Produce and sold. And then total fixed cost, not only production. And that gives us total cost. Then units produced and sold. And that gives us total cost per unit. Okay. And let's gut this. Okay. So first off, guys. Let's figure out what is, okay, the variable cost per unit, okay? So we're going to have to take the variable production cost per unit, the VPC per unit, plus, okay, plus the variable selling expense per unit, okay? So to find our variable production cost per unit, guys, we already know this is 51, okay? Now we need to find what's the variable selling cost per unit. So our variable selling costs are 225000 so total variable selling cost. And now, guys, if we want to find the variable selling cost per unit, what should I divide by to get the VSE per unit, right? Because, guys, this is selling cost. So remember, if I want to find the cost of one unit, I need to take the total variable selling, then divide by units produced, or, and I'm asking you a question here, even though I know I'm not going to get an answer because I'm recording by myself. Do I divide by units produced or units sold? What do I do? Okay, well, guys, remember, this is a selling cost. So it's based on units sold. So I divide by number of units sold. Okay, if it's a production cost, you divide by units produced. But if it's a selling cost, you divide by units sold. So everyone, in the original information, our variable selling cost is 225,000. And we sold 30,000 units here. Okay, because we produced and sold 30,000 units. If sold was 25,000, then you would divide by 25,000. So your variable selling cost per unit is 7.5. So your variable production cost per unit is 51. Your variable selling cost is 7.5. So your total variable cost per unit that takes into account the variable production and the variable selling is 58. 58.5. 58 
Now, guys, the cost is for 25,000 units. So I'm going to put 25,000 here. Okay. That gives us a total variable cost of 142, 1 million, sorry, uh, 462,500. Okay. Now, guys, I need to add in my fixed cost. So I need to see what's my fixed production cost, which is just basically, guys, your FOH. Right? Plus, because fixed cost, guys, there's no real work to do because they're fixed in total, right? So you just need to add up the totals. It's very straightforward. The fixed costs are always very straightforward to do. There's no calculations. But the variable cost, guys, you're going to have to calculate because they're always changing, right? Plus fixed selling expenses or fixed period costs. All right, like this, all fixed period costs. Because you might have a bunch of other costs, especially when you get to Chapter 6. Because Chapter 2, guys, is kind of an intro to Chapter 6 when you're talking about variable product, variable period. You're going to see like chapter six just builds on this. It gets tougher. So we have fixed selling costs, which is basically fixed period costs. Same thing. Okay. FSE is what I call it. Okay. So everyone, our fixed production costs is our FOH of 405,000, right? Everyone's here. FO fixed overhead 405. And then our fixed selling is 225. So plus 225, 000. zero. So that gives us guys a total cost at 25,000 units of 2,092,000. So our total cost for 25K units is 2,092,000. Now the question is asking us, what's the total cost per unit? So the first thing, guys, we want to find the total cost per unit. We first find our total cost. Then, guys, we divide by the number that got us there. So if we found the cost, the variable cost at 25,000 units, then, guys, for our total cost, we need to take the amount of units that brought us to this cost. Because 25,000 units, guys, it gave us this variable cost. It didn't affect the fixed cost. So now that we know the total cost is 25,000 units, if I want to find the cost per unit at this level of output, I then divide by the cost that brought me here. So you gave me this 2,092,500. So if I want to find the original cost per unit, taking into account the variable and the fixed portion, that gives me 83.7. And that is my answer to required E. So let me put here my two answers. This and then total cost per unit here is for the previous one, it was 73. Okay, now guys, this is very straightforward to do because now you could literally solve, like I want to show you, now that we have this total cost equation, it takes into account the variable production, the variable selling, look how easy this is. What if they asked you, okay, let's just, let's just gut this. Let's keep the fixed cost the same. So remember guys, the variable cost per unit never changes and the total fixed cost never changes, all right? These are the two constants. So like I said, once you have these two numbers in, you could literally just plug in anything and get your answer. So look at what we're going to do, guys. So I'm going to plug in this here. The yellow will be whatever I plug in. What if the question said hypothetically, okay, 50,000 units, right? How easy would it be? Just plug in 50,000, this times this, done, right? Because then we're dividing by 50,000, full cost at 50K, right? What if they said uh, one unit? What if you only produced one? Okay, I'm showing the importance of knowing how to build this total cost equation. One, here you go. That's total cost per unit. Pretty expensive for one unit, right? Because then you're taking the fixed cost. You're not spreading it over any number of units, right? So remember, it goes hand in hand with economies of scale, right? It's like your rent. If you're only one person in that apartment, enjoy the high rent. Where, where's the example of that? Here we go. You see how the fixed cost changes in total? So anyways, guys, that's it. Right, you could literally just go once you have this equation, you're in the money. You could plug in whatever number of units, it will be very straightforward. But the big thing is, guys, and I'll write this equation one more time because this equation is your best friend. Your total cost per unit is the VC per unit times the number of units. Okay, plus the total fixed cost. All right, this equation, guys, this is your money equation for these types of chapters. Okay. So like I said, everyone, I keep saying it again and again, you need to find this VC per unit. Wait, let me just unbold everything. You need to find the VC per unit based on the original information in the question. So I'll write it like this. Shapes, put some arrow. Find VC per unit based on original info in the question. Okay. And that's what you're going to do because then you can just plug in the new number use and then you're going to say find total fixed cost. Find TFC based on original info in the question, right? Because guys, they're going to give you like a certain cost structure. And then, you know, once you find these two numbers, 
they never change. The variable cost per unit and the total fixed cost, they never change, right? So you find these, and then guys, you're in the money because then you could just plug in whatever number of units, whatever number you want from me, Dr. Ali, like hit me, right? Hit me, send your worst, send a million units, whoever, send an army, right? I don't care, like I can solve for it. I just plug in my new number of units right over here, million, right? Because now my Excel is like automated at this point. Now I have like 21,000. Right, whatever number of units, guys, you see, you could solve it just instantly once you have this equation. That's it. That's all. Okay, so once you build this equation, guys, you're good. If you're not convinced at this point, you know, just keep solving. You'll be convinced. If not, just ask me a question. Guys, that's a wrap for chapter two. Hope you guys like these videos. Let me know if you ever have any questions, and I'll see you for chapter three.